Depending on the machine learning task and the evaluation objective you want to solve, different performance metrics can be used. For our first set of task-specific performance metrics, we will look at the basic metrics for the classification scenario. Let's consider a simple example where we want to classify whether a patient has a certain disease or not. As with any other classification task, our dataset of patients consists of people that actually have the disease and people that do not have the disease. The people which are diagnosed with the disease will be called positive, and the ones which are not diagnosed are called negative. Together, positive and negative samples form our complete dataset and build our ground truth. You might have heard about a false positive, for example in the context of getting tested for COVID or any other sickness or disease. Sometimes you also hear about false negatives. But what exactly makes a positive or negative sample false? Let's have a look at a simple grid with four quadrants. The rows of our 2x2 grid indicate our predictions. The first row will list all of the samples that our model predicts to be positive, and the second row will list all of the samples that our model predicts to be negative. Similarly, we also want to keep the information of our ground truth and what the actual positive and negative samples are. Therefore, our first column will list all of the positively diagnosed patients, and the second column will do the same for the negatively diagnosed patients. The best case scenario for our model will be our top left quadrant. We correctly predict that the patient we are looking at has a positive diagnosis. We also call those samples true positives, as we predicted positive, and this is also true in our ground truth. The same goes for the opposite, where we correctly classify that a patient does not have the disease. We call those cases true negatives, similar to our true positives. Now, let's look at our false positive and negative cases. False in this context means that our model prediction is wrong and does not reflect our ground truth. So, for example, let's look at the top right quadrant where our model predicts positive, but in fact the person is negative. Similar to the argumentation before, we will say positive as this is what our model predicted. But this time we add false to it as it does not align with our ground truth. Hence, we call those cases false positives. Once again, the same now goes for false negatives, which means that our model predicts the patient to be negative, but our original dataset says otherwise. These can be found in the lower left quadrant. Okay, with this you now know the four basic definitions of true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. On their own, those metrics can already give you some insights, but there are some combined metrics that provide even better insights. Let's have a look. The most intuitive metric is accuracy. Accuracy simply measures how many of our predictions were correct. So in terms of our four key metrics from before, we simply add true positives and true negatives and divide them through the total number of samples in our dataset, basically calculating the ratio of correctly classified data points. Two other related metrics that you might have heard about are sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is also known as true positive rate, or recall. With this metric, we want to look at the ratio of true positives compared to actual positive cases, or in other words, how good our model is at identifying the disease. For this, you simply have to divide the number of true positives by the number of actual positive cases in our dataset. This can be further detailed by saying you have to divide the number of true positives by the sum of true positives and false negatives. Let's take a moment to think about this. The total number of actual positive cases can be seen as correctly predicted positive cases, the true positives, but also the ones we missed and incorrectly classified as negative, which are our false negatives. And the higher our sensitivity is, the better we are identifying our positive cases. For specificity, we can also use the term true negative rate. Specificity wants to look at the ratio of true negatives compared with actual negative cases, or in other words, wants to reduce the possibility for a false positive. Basically, we want to reduce the number of people that are incorrectly diagnosed with the disease. Similar to sensitivity, we simply divide our true negatives by our total number of actual negative cases, which can be further detailed by dividing the true negatives by the sum of true negatives and false positives. The higher our specificity is, the less false positives will be generated by our model. As we can see, sensitivity and specificity can be matched with the columns of our grid, but we can also match the rows of our grid. We will look at two different metrics, the positive predictive value and negative predictive value. The positive predictive value is also known as precision and tells us how many of our positively predicted cases are actual positive cases in our dataset. Therefore, you will simply have to divide the number of true positives by the sum of true positives and false positives. Similarly, the negative predictive value tells us how many of our negatively predicted cases are actual negative cases in our dataset. Thus, we will divide the number of true negatives 
by the sum of true negatives and false negatives. Precision and recall are two very popular metrics that you will most likely see in many experiments. But depending on your use case, a mix of different metrics might fit you better. For example, testing for a disease definitely also wants to look at specificity, and so do some safety critical applications. Another very common metric used in a classification setting is the so-called F1 score. The F1 score tries to sum up the insights from the precision and recall metric into one as some cases might have high precision but super low recall, or the other way around. So if you want to look at a metric that gives you a more general idea of how well your model performs, you will probably look at the F1 score. In more technical detail, the F1 score is simply the harmonic mean of precision and recall. This means that we will calculate 2 times the true positive rate times the positive predictive value and divide the outcome by the sum of the true positive rate and the positive predicted value. If you insert the definitions for true positive rate and positive predictive value, we get to a formula that divides 2 times true positives by the sum of 2 times true positives plus false positives plus false negatives. And with this, we have covered the most popular metrics for the classification setting. There are many more combinations using our initial four key metrics to look at the performance from different angles, but you should be set to evaluate your first experiments using the metrics we have discussed in this video. There are also many many more metrics that go beyond what we have discussed in this video, but I will leave them up for you to discover.